today we're going head to head with Mega Mocap VR versus Sony Mocap -y. I've learned some stuff you're not going to want to miss. <laughs> So, obviously, I have a bit of bias. I'm wearing the Mega Mocap VR shirt. I drank the Kool-Aid because I made the Kool-Aid. But I gotta say, I bought Sony Mocap because I wanted this to work. Uh, and it does for the most part. But let me get into it. Which one is which? Who do I shoot? Who do I shoot? And here it is. We've got all of our Vive trackers on. We've got Mocapi sensors on. We're streaming from a Mocapi computer with a direct connection to my Unreal Engine instance because I found that gives us better performance. And here it is, a side-by-side -side of Mega Mocap VR versus Sony Mocapi. Unfortunately, live streaming doesn't work well. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. So Mocapi most likely doesn't like all the interference from all the Vive trackers, which is unfortunate because I wanted to use both systems in tandem, basically doing two actors, one with my system, one with Mocapi. Um, so this is basically for reference, this is what Mega Mocap VR uh, would, would basically give you in this scenario. We've powered off all the VR hardware, we've taken it off. This is just the Mocapi streaming from my computer into my Unreal Engine via direct connection. And still you can see it's there's some weird hitches. And unfortunately, the longer you run XYN, which is the Mocapi software, the more hitches it gets. And if you have to power down that software, then you have to basically take out all of the Mocapi sensors, put them on a flat surface, reconnect them, put them back on, recalibrate your body, and then you've lost, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, uh, maybe not 10 minutes, but it definitely feels like it takes you out of the workflow. Uh, which is really unfortunate. I feel like the recordings don't have that same issue, but live streaming definitely gets hitchier the longer that you run X, Y, N. But as you can see, the actual body solve of this is really good. I'm very impressed when it actually updates. Uh, <laughs> again, recordings are not as big of an issue. So I actually really like the Sony Mocapi. These sensors are very nice. They're lightweight. They've got a good battery life. They rarely disconnect. They seem pretty robust. I haven't really done a stress test on them yet. The onboarding software, all that stuff's very good. There is a negative there though. There is a subscription model on the software for using the pro setup. The thing is with subscription models, who's to say that you're gonna be able to use your hardware if say things get deprecated. Uh, I tend to not like things that you make you pay to use your hardware because bad things often happen in this world. So I actually wanna do a real comparison of these things, but I don't think we can do it with streaming. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna record Mega Mocap VR using Take Recorder, and I'm gonna record Mocapi using XYN. So we're gonna like put them side by side in engine after we record both takes. Yeah, 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 Kung Fu. Yeah. Yeah. Kung Fu. So one thing I found interesting is I did a stress test of my system where I'm crawling on the ground and there's lots of occlusion when you're crawling on the ground. It's typically a bad idea in motion capture, but it actually held up better, I think, than the Mocapi stuff. And I think it's because the Mocapi stuff is very reliant on foot plants. Um, so like it's looking at your rotation values, your kind of movement of the um, accelerometers and like locking the foot in place to, and it actually does a great job. Like you'll notice like, the locomotion, like the amount of space that I traverse, it's pretty much one-to-one -one on both systems, which is really interesting. Like, look at that. They kind of match perfectly. Yeah, I'm very impressed with the actual recordings of the Mocap e Pro. So for about a week now, I've been making control rigs, trying different connection methods, trying to get the best data possible out of something like Cappy. And I gotta say, the body solve is pretty good. And for the price, it is really, really nice if you're not live streaming into Unreal Engine. I would say it's not just for VTubing applications. Being able to live stream into Unreal Engine and get like data this clean, it's really good for take recorder. So what I often do is I'll record the face, body, and voice all at once and get that in take recorder. I don't have to sync everything. I don't have to like export an FBX and then like put it onto a skeleton and then re-import into Unreal Engine. Like all the stuff is just ready for me to use out of the box. I would definitely use this for recording pre-baked animations for stuff. One of the big limitations of Mega Mocap VR is you need a VR volume. And sometimes, say if you're running around a space, you don't have enough volume to actually get the, the scene. So the nice thing with Sony Mocapi, you could just put this on, go outside. You would need a hotspot to your computer because of the subscription, it like phones, homes. But you could get some amazing data out in the field and you wouldn't be limited by your volume size. 
So anyways, that's my Zoe Mocapi review. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about the stuff. I still have the hardware. I'm not going to return it. Um, and if you have any experience with Sony Mocapi yourself, or you have any suggestions for uh, me or other people in the community that uh, might be having similar problems, put it down in the comments. I hope you have a great one and take care, everyone. Maybe Lucas. Thank you, Mocapi. <laughs>